Good day everyone, for, the, for today's activity, we are going to simulate a three-phase system using in Multisem. So let's get started. Let me show you the circuit. The left portion of the screen is the circuit we are going to simulate and the right portion of the screen is the simulator we are going to use. But first, let's click the blank page, blank so that we can add each component. To add each component, just type Ctrl W. Then select basic where you can find the load. The load is our impedance of our element. So you can choose it this you choose it. Let's click this one then for the placement we're just going to copy our circuit. We will put it here. the Z1, Z2, and Z3. For the Z4, Z5, and Z Z6, we're going to use the A plus G, GB. So let's put it here. Then here. And here. So now we are finished putting all the impedance, the line impedance, and the load impedance. Next, we are going to add the values of Z1, Z2, Z3, which is 50 angle negative 60. But there, but you cannot put 50 angle negative 60 there. So that, so we are going to convert it to its complex form. So we are just going to calculate it. 50 angle negative 60 to your calculator. Then shift convert the number 5, we will get 25 minus and don't put negative because it's already negative 43.30127019 and our frequency is 60. Then just copy it because Z2 and Z3 is equal to Z1. So let's add another value. So let's add, add here from Z2. Z2. So let's add here. Let's click this. Just add. Now, in order to input our load impedance with a magnitude of 25 and a phase angle of 30, we need to convert it into the real and reactive form. And with that, for our real value, we have mm, 21.6506.3509. And for our reactance value, we have 12.5. And of course, our operating frequency should also be 60 Hz. So, we copy the values of our previous load impedance and input it to the next two load impedances. We have 12.5 Hz. And our reactance, our real value, and our reactance. And then again, 60 Hz. After we input the values for our load impedances, we now then put the voltage source. Now for our source, we have a given of VAB, VBC, and VCA, which indicates that it is a line voltage. Now let's assume that our source is a three-phase delta source because in a delta source, the line voltage is equal of that with its phase voltage. Now we input the magnitude of our voltage source and set its frequency to 60 Hz. Let's change its name to VS. Let's have this VS. Now. The question is 
we need to find the reading for each watt meter. From the circuit given, we need to put 3 watt meters to its designated places. That is, watt meter A, watt meter B, and watt meter C. As we place the watt meters to its designated places, we connect the load impedances Z4, Z5, and Z6 based on a circuit given. The other end of Z4 is connected to watt meter A in the negative side of I or current. Now we can rotate the line impedances Z1 and Z3 and arrange the load impedance Z4 in accordance to the given circuit and rotate the light impedance Z2. The load impedance Z5 is connected to the wattmeter B particularly in the negative side of I arranging each element based on the given circuit. Same as the load impedance Z6 is connected to the wattmeter C, particularly in the negative side of I. Just arranging some elements to fit perfectly, same as the figure 12.40 or the giving circuit. Connect the line impedance Z2 based on the given circuit, same as the other line impedances Z3 and Z. Now, we connect the wattmeter particularly in the positive of I to the voltage source. Same goes with wattmeter C and what meter B. Same with positive side of what meter A, B, and C is connected to the voltage source. The other negative sign voltage of wattmeters A, B, and C, we connect them in a parallel manner. So as you can see, if we run our circuit, there's an error. We need to put a ground mm. in our circuit. We're all set. Now we can identify the reading for each wattmeter just by clicking on it and there we have our power in our watt meters a b and c now we can compare our values with our theoretical as you can see we have at least a 0.23 percent margin of error as we compare our simulation to our theoretical and that is acceptable
fight, they'll tell the story.